All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to St. Peter's. Glad you are here. It is an honor to have you with us today. We are marking the commemoration of two giants of the 19th century with regard to the establishment of monastic orders or the revival of monastic orders in the, in the Anglican world. One is Charles Gore, who was uh, an Episcopal bishop or an Anglican bishop in the Church of England. Uh, the other was Richard Mew Benson, who founded the community of, this is of uh, St. John the Evangelist. So there's two people that we're remembering. There is a dissociation between them because one is very much um, of England and the other one really kind of for the world. So we'll hold those two in tension. Uh, what makes them one, if you will, is that both were in, both were very focused on creating uh, a religious living environment founded on Benedictine principles. Uh, up until that time, the only Anglican religious were nuns and convents. And now uh, brothers living together in community took a new form. The interesting thing about Richard Mew Benson is that he was um, an Oxford movement person who uh, really was intentional about gathering a community intentionally around him for life vows of service to the poor. This was a big focus rather than just being simply in contemplation. The idea that people would be actively engaged in the world as religious was very important. The other side of that, Charles Gore, and this kind of stuck out as I was doing my research, is that he was very intentional about um, that aspect of gathering people in community making a, a, a witness in service to the poor and uh, was very much involved in the Christian Union, which was a labor movement in the Church of England uh, in those days. And he was also eventually chaplain to Queen Victoria and also to King Edward VII. This all said, um, he was credited with founding this religious order, and yet he never really lived in community. He was a person who was very focused on building community, and yet, as one biographer said, he was very much a loner. So there you go. Um, really two remarkable figures, and uh, the Society of St. John the Evangelist is with us to this day. Truly a, an amazing and remarkable pair of figures. And uh, the Cowley Fathers, because that's what they're often referred to as the Society of the SSJE, um, the Cowley Fathers have a house in Boston, and that has been their mother house for many years, and they continue to serve the poor and the community around them. Very much an influential pair of voices in the Oxford movement, liturgical revivals. Uh, Charles Gore was rather controversial in his day for his adherence to ritualism and was actually subject to the equivalent of what Anglicans might refer to as an inquisition, although really it was just sitting in a rather beautiful library answering questions by examiners. So, you know, we are after all Anglican and must uh, conduct ourselves with a plum. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give us that thumbs up, know that it is an honor to have you with us today and to mark the uh, daily office. I will say we are not sure about evening prayer tonight. I'm still trying to connect with when my doctor of ministry class starts. So we'll keep you guys apprised and posted with regard to that on our social media accounts. But please do follow us on Facebook. Give us your prayer concerns and notes, and we'll keep you posted on the developments as they happen and occur. All right. Morning prayer. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouths proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. 
Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 26 and 28, I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. Those in whose hands are evil devices, and I'm... whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk with integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock. Do not refuse to hear me, for if you are silent to me, I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication as I cry to you for help, as I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who are workers for evil, who speak peace with their neighbors while mischief is in their hearts. Repay them according to their work, and according to the evil of their deeds. Repay them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the work of his hands, he will break them down and build them up no more. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the sound of my pleadings. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. So I am helped, and my heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. <clears throat> the fear and dread of you shall rest on every animal of the earth and on every bird of the air and on everything that creeps on the ground and on all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And just as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. For your own lifeblood, I will surely require a reckoning. From every animal, I will require it, and from human beings, each one for the blood of another. I will require a reckoning for human life. Whoever sheds the blood of a human, by a human shall that person's blood be shed. For in his own image, God made humankind. And you, be fruitful and multiply, abound on the earth and multiply in it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark. 
I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning is the second song of Isaiah together. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. About this we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become dull in understanding. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, A Song to the Lamb. Please join in. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord, O God most high. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a royal priesthood to serve our God. And so to the one who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Gracious God, who kindled in your servants Richard Mew Benson and Charles Gore the Grace to lead a revival of monastic life, Give us also the resolve to serve you faithfully in contemplation and prayer, ministering to the world that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in a prayer for the whole human family. O oh God, you have made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving this morning for all those who spent yesterday memorializing Martin Luther King Jr. by doing volunteer work. And we pray for all those who volunteer their time and talents throughout the year to help people and organizations we ask that you keep those places where volunteers are safe and uplifting and free from any negativity and gossip. Amen. Pray for all those who are exposed to the intensity of the storm as it makes its way across the Northeast. Pray for all those who have to be outside today, either by necessity or for work. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Bukuru, the Anglican Church of Nigeria. In the Diocese cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and lay deputies of the Diocesan Convention. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We appreciate your presence. As we said at the top, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Let us know your prayer concerns and your thanksgivings, and we'll make sure we offer those at the appropriate time. It is a great honor to have you with us. As again, please keep an eye on our social feeds, both our Facebook page and also um, on my own uh, Facebook page. We'll give you an update on whether or not we're going to be able to pull off evening prayer tonight, but we'll keep you posted. Please stay warm, stay dry, and if you can't, stay inside. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.